Hello, my name is Joseph Quilter and I'm the Chief Flight Instructor here at Southern Utah University. Today, we're going to be diving into how the landing gear systems work on our Beechcraft Bonanza models here at SUU Aviation. To understand how the landing gear system works, we'll need to break it up into three categories. Landing gear actuation, landing gear indication, and emergency operations. All right, let's get started. First, we will look at how the landing gear retraction works. The landing gear actuation begins at the gear handle. Once the pilot commands the gear up, the signal travels to the manifold pressure switch. If the manifold pressure is set below 17 inches, the switch will open and the signal will be stopped, preventing gear retraction. However, the actual manifold pressure indications when the switch activates will vary due to atmospheric conditions. If the manifold pressure switch is set above 17 inches, the switch will close and the signal travels to the squat switch, sometimes referred to as a weight on wheel switch. If the squat switch is open because the aircraft is on the ground, the signal is stopped. However, if the aircraft is airborne and the squat switch is closed, the signal travels on to the gear motor up limit switch located on the gearbox housing. If the up limit switch is closed, the signal will make it to the motor, which will move the gear in the retraction direction, or clockwise. As the gear actuates, adjustable screws mounted to the star gear will contact the up limit switch and move it to the open position. This breaks the circuit and depowers the gear motor, causing it to stop moving. The gear motor is attached to the gearbox. As the motor turns, the gearbox turns, which causes the actuation arms to move. The main gear and gear doors are retracted as the star gear on top of the gearbox rotates. This rotation causes the main gear actuation arms, attached on the left and right side of the star gear, to shorten in length, which breaks the stay and pulls the gear up. The main gear door is also opened and then closed again by the door actuation rods attached to the forward and aft arms of the star gear. As the star gear rotates, the actuation rod is lengthened at mid-travel, causing the door to open, and then returns to the same length as it completes its travel, which recloses the door. This allows the main gear to open just long enough for the gear to clear while actuating, and then keeps the door gear closed during gear up and gear down operations to minimize drag. Attached to the main door actuation arm is the uplock cable. The uplock cable is tensioned at the door closed position to engage the uplock system. The uplock takes the weight load of the gear off of the gear box during cruise flight. This is accomplished as the uplock roller engages the uplock stay. Shortly after touching, tension is applied to the uplock cable by the main door actuation arm, causing the uplock stay to lock the roller in position. This prevents the gear from being able to extend and supports the weight of the gear until the uplock is disengaged. The nose gear is also retracted by the movement of the gearbox. As the gearbox rotates, the nose actuation arm mounted to the bottom of the gearbox rotates from forward to the aft position. This effectively shortens the length of the nose gear actuation arm and pulls the nose gear up. As the nose gear is actuated, there are two other tasks that are accomplished by its movement. The nose gear door actuation and the nose wheel steering disengagement. As the nose wheel is retracted into the gear bay, it pulls the nose gear door up behind it. This is accomplished by the engagement of the door catch with the nose gear stay. As the nose gear catch rotates, it pulls and then holds the gear door in the up position. The second task is the disengagement of the nose wheel steering. The nose wheel steering rod is attached to the pilot's rudder pedals and moves as the rudder moves, causing the nose wheel to turn in the desired direction of turn. As the gear retracts, the angle at which the rod engages the nose wheel through the universal joint changes 90 degrees. 
This causes the steering rod to lose mechanical advantage and disengage the nose wheel steering. At the same time the steering rod is losing mechanical advantage, a roller bearing located at the top of the nose gear strut begins to engage the centering channel. This causes the nose wheel to move to the center position to fit into the gear bay, regardless of pilot rudder input. Gear extension is accomplished in the reverse order. When a pilot commands a gear extension, the signal travels from the gear handle to the gear motor down limit switch. If the switch is closed, the motor is powered and begins to move the gearbox in the extend direction, or counterclockwise. This causes the star gear and the nose actuation arm to lengthen the actuation rods. As the main gear door actuation rods begin to move, the tension is removed from the uplock cable. This allows the uplock spring to pull the uplock stay away from the uplock roller, which allows the gear to start moving in the extend position. With the uplock disengaged, the gear actuation rods are allowed to extend, which pushes the gear down. When the gear reaches the end of its travel, the stay obtains the over-centered position. By extending beyond straight and having all three gear physically linked together, this over-center position locks the gear down for safe ground operations. Now that we know how the landing gear system moves, let's dive into how the system will let the pilot know what's going on. There are three indications the pilot receives to indicate the position of the landing gear. You can remember these three steps with the memory aid of hear it, feel it, and see it. The first indication is the sound of the gear motor moving. The second indication is the feel of the aircraft changing as drag is decreased or increased due to landing gear movement. The third indication is given by the lights in the cockpit. As the landing gear retracts, the first see it indication will be the three green lights extinguishing while the red light turns on. The green light turns off because contact with the down position switches located in the right and left main gear, as well as the nose gear bay, is broken as the gear begins to move. This causes the circuit to open and the green lights to turn off. The red light, known as the disagreement light or unsafe light or transition light, is turned on by the disagreement between the gear handle and the position switches. When the pilot selects the up position with the gear handle, the system is told to look at the up position switches. If one or more of the up position switches are not closed, the gear handle and the position switches disagree and the light is illuminated. As the gear reaches the end of its retraction travel, it makes contact with the up switches located in the appropriate gear bay. When all three up position switches are closed, the system agrees and the light is extinguished. All four lights extinguished indicates to the pilot that the gear has successfully retracted. Extending the gear works in reverse order. The pilot commands a gear extension with the gear handle. The down switches are not yet closed, so the disagreement light comes on. As the gear reaches the end of its travel in the extension position, it comes in contact with all three of the down switches. When all three down switches are closed, the system agrees, and the disagreement light is extinguished. If the system thinks the pilot is setting up for a landing, but has not yet extended the landing gear, the gear warning system will engage. The gear warning system will warn the pilot by using a flashing red light, combined with a loud warning alarm to get the pilot's attention and inform them of the gear's position. There are three conditions that would cause this to occur. These conditions depend on the position of the manifold pressure switch, the position of the flaps, and the position of the squat switch. First, 
if the pilot reduces the manifold pressure below 12 inches with the gear in the up position. This will cause the gear warning manifold pressure switch to be closed and will cause the alarm to sound. Secondly, the gear warning system will be activated by deploying full flaps with the gear up. As the flaps are deployed, micro switches on the left flap are activated to determine the position of the flaps. The first two switches determine flap position indication only. The last micro switch also activates the gear warning system. Lastly, the gear warning system will be activated by weight on wheels, opening the squat switch. All of these conditions should not be encountered during normal flight operations. However, during training, some practice maneuvers will require a configuration that causes the gear warning system to activate. If the landing gear fails to actuate properly, the pilot will need to troubleshoot the system using the landing gear indications. We will start with failures to retract. There are four possible modes with a failure to retract. First, all of the green lights remain on and the red light comes on. This tells the pilot that the landing gear did not move, likely due to motor failure. Verify using sound, feel, and outside resources as available. Then return the gear handle down and land with caution. Second, one or more green light stays on and the red light comes on. This tells the pilot that one or more of the landing gear did not make it all the way up, likely due to a mechanical malfunction. Verify using sound, feel, and outside resources as available. Then return the gear to the down position if able. If unable to get the gear down, a partial extension landing may be required. Exercise extreme caution. Third, all three green lights go out, but the red light stays on. This tells the pilot that one or more of the landing gear did not make it all the way up or there is a short in the wire to the disagree light. Verify using sound, feel, and outside resources as available. Then return the gear to the down position if able. If unable to get the gear down, a partial extension landing may be required. Exercise extreme caution. Fourth, one or more of the green lights stay on, but the red light goes out. This tells the pilot that both the down and up switches are closed on the affected gear, likely due to ice buildup on the switch. Verify using sound, feel, and outside resources as available. Then fly to an altitude or location that would remove ice, if able. If unable to get the green light out, extend landing gear and land with caution. The gear will likely indicate normal, but may not be fully down. Next, we'll get into failures to extend. There are four more possible failure modes with a failure to extend. First, one or more green lights did not come on and the red light remains on. This tells the pilot that the affected gear has not fully extended or the down switch has failed, likely due to mechanical failure. Verify using sound, feel, and outside resources as available. Then retract the gear if able and consider a gear up landing. If unable to get the gear up, a partial extension landing may be required. Partial extension landings with a failed main are far more dangerous than partial extension landings with a failed nose wheel extension. Second, one green light does not come on and the red light turns off. This tells the pilot that all three down switches have been closed because the disagreement light is out. Therefore, the failure is a burnt out light bulb. Verify using sound, feel, and the light bulb test switch and outside resources as available. Then proceed with a gear down landing. Third, all three green lights come on, but the red light also stays on. This tells the pilot that all three down switches have been closed because all three green lights are on. Therefore, the failure is a chafed wire to the disagreement light. Verify using sound, feel, and outside resources as available, then proceed with a gear down landing. 
Fourth, all three green lights remain out while the red light turns on. This tells the pilot that the gear system did not move, likely due to gear motor failure. Verify using sound, feel, and outside resources as available. This is the only gear failure situation where an emergency extension is warranted. To engage the emergency extend procedure, begin by pulling the landing gear circuit breaker to depower the system. Ensure the gear handle is in the down position, and then you can engage the emergency extend hand crank behind the co-pilot seat. Move the hand crank counterclockwise, approximately 50 turns. This will take some time and focus away from flying. Use a crew member to help if able. If you are the only one aboard, maneuver to an area clear of traffic and perform the extension. The faster your airspeed is, the more resistance you will experience on the hand crank, so consider slowing down if it is safe to do so. Lastly, don't stop cranking when the green lights turn on. Continue until you hit the stops and can't crank any further. Keep in mind that the gear may not be fully locked, so land as softly as possible and minimize taxi speed, especially in turns. Thank you for watching this video. We hope that you found it informative and that it helps you make better decisions as a Bonanza pilot. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you on the next video.